my god. When the earth starts shaking, there's no way to tell how bad it will get. Oh my god. On the 4th of July, 2019, in Ridgecrest, California, a 6.4. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Panic is one thing we can predict, but oh what we can't do scientifically is predict the quake itself. Six in California is clearly something you, you drop everything and, and take a look at. Moments after the quake, seismologists work to locate and analyze the source. Anytime you have an earthquake, the chances of having another earthquake over the baseline chances goes up considerably. Paul Earl with the National Earthquake Information Center in Golden, Colorado says the public knows earthquakes come in swarms. What they don't know is when the next one will hit or if it will be bigger than the first. If you're an earthquake, pull all units out from your station. In Ridgecrest, the USGS thought it was possible the 6.4 was not the main shock and the public needed to know. There is about a one in 20 chance that this location will be having an even bigger earthquake within the next few days. It's hard to do without scaring people because you want to let them know there's a potential for another another earthquake and it could be larger, but you don't want to want to want to put that out as this is going to happen. This is bad, Brian. A bigger shock did hit one day later on July 5th, this time a 7.1 aftershock. Two of the largest earthquakes to hit California in decades. <laughs> Earl says seismologists are making progress in forecasting aftershocks thanks to advancements in computer processing power and breakthroughs in artificial intelligence. But when it comes to flat out predicting earthquakes... People don't like to use the word predict because that um, implies that we're going to give an exact time and place where an earthquake occurs. Meteorologists have figured out how to predict major weather disasters. We've experienced some heavy showers, thunder, lightning, even a tornado warning at one point. They've mapped out Tornado Alley and know what time of year the big twisters are likely to hit. Dorian is battering the Atlantic coast. Hurricanes also have a season, and meteorologists can even issue warnings for storms days in advance. The USGS uses seismic hazard maps to understand where quakes are most likely to hit, they can even forecast potential magnitudes. But when and where an earthquake will hit remains truly unpredictable. But in terms of finding exact time and place, predicting where that's going to be for the next earthquake, I don't think that's going to happen in, in my career. I hope I'm wrong. I hope we get to that pl place in the science. The fault lines that spawn earthquakes lurk below some of America's biggest cities. USGS seismologists have estimated how destructive major earthquakes can be along these faults by modeling actual scenarios. Like the 800 mile long San Andreas Fault, a projected earthquake of 7.8 magnitude on the southern part of the fault could kill nearly 2,000 people, injure 50,000 more, and cause $200 billion in damage. The smaller but highly urbanized Hayward Fault near Oakland, a projected 7.0 magnitude quake here, could kill 800 people, injure 1,800 more, and cause 82 billion in damage. And the Cascadia subduction zone here in the Pacific Northwest, capable of producing the world's most powerful earthquakes, upwards of magnitude 9. With the fault zone offshore, the intensity is not as high, but the real killer in this scenario is the resulting tsunami. In that case, it's very obvious why speed matters. Warning from NOAA's Tsunami Warning Center would give the coastline of the Pacific Northwest less than 20 minutes notice. So these are all different stations that are all around the world. The NEIC locates and analyzes 20 to 30,000 earthquakes every year from Colorado. But they say on average worldwide there is only one magnitude 8 every year and a 9 about every 30 years. Earl has seen two 9s in his career, Indonesia in 2004 and Japan in 2011. It can be stressful because there's these, you know, there's, you know, that earthquake killed tens of thousands of people. And, uh, and this is going on and you're trying to concentrate on what you're doing. So you go home at night and it's just like, you know, you're, you're bawling when you're seeing these pictures of, I mean, you know, people trapped under buildings, you know, kids trapped under buildings. He hopes he never has to see another nine, but knows the so-called big one is lurking anytime, anywhere. I think it's a good concept to, to get to focus people's attention, but we don't know what the next big one will be. The, the, there will be big ones, 
but the next big one we're not sure. That could be in Northern California, it could be in Southern California, it could be in Pacific Northwest. You know, we don't we don't know.